So good evening, everyone. Dr. Barbara Russell here, and this is our third virtual voyage community message or update um, as we navigate this COVID-19 pandemic in a virtual school environment. So I'd like to provide you with some information in the hopes that tonight you leave better informed about some of the topics we've talked about, and tonight I'll dive in a little bit deeper to some that we haven't really touched upon, and certainly entertain your questions. To begin, I always want to extend wishes that you are remaining healthy, your friends, your family, all are remaining healthy, and that you are finding ways through this very challenging time, these unprecedented times really, to, to get through. And we're hoping that from the school district's perspective, you feel as if you have a partner in us. So please let us know if there's anything that we can do. In addition to wishing you good health and, and the hopes that really you and your family are remaining healthy, I would like to extend thanks to individuals within our community who serve in the medical field in any capacity. Thank you for your dedication to your work. Um, it's not easy right now based on what we hear about on the news. If you are a first responder, thank you for your work. If you are an essential worker, thank you for continuing to report every day and serving us in the ways that we appreciate very much. Um, and again, I hope all of you are remaining healthy. I want to give a shout out tonight too to Mimi's Masks. I learned about this organization recently and this is an individual in our community, uh, Mary Biter. Uh, I don't believe she has any children in our schools right now. However, she has organized an effort with volunteers and donations to actually create, produce 15,000 masks. And I know that some of you that might be tuned in tonight are participating in that effort. It's very much appreciated. So if there's a silver lining in these tough times or such a challenging situation as the one we're experiencing, it's the efforts of those individuals working in really tough careers or as volunteers and those that are donating and giving a lot of themselves. So that makes Perkiomen Valley really special. So thanks for that. So shout out to all of you. All right, so this is the third of our live streams. We've been doing these every two weeks. So believe it or not, we've been doing this for about six weeks now. And, and I'm hoping that you're getting into a sort of groove, if you will, and things are going okay for your child. And if they're not going so okay, I hope that you're comfortable reaching out to his or her teacher or teachers, as well as the building principal. And I'm always open to having conversations about considerations that we can make. Um, and I'll put it out there, you know, I'm really interested in learning from the parent community how this virtual learning experience has gone for your children what's what's representative of a success what's a challenge where can we improve because the reality of our situation is that there is a possibility we could be doing this in the fall we're just not certain at this point so we want to do everything we can to continue to strengthen the experiences we're offering and get it as right as we can as different as it really is so thanks to all of you that are supporting your children right now. I know that can't be easy working at home if you're in that situation on top of supporting your children in their schoolwork. So I thank you for your partnership again. I also want to give a shout out to our staff. Our staffs are working really hard to be creative, to be innovative, to reach every student. And that's very much appreciated. So thanks for that. All right, so let's talk a little bit about some of the topics that I'd like to touch upon tonight. First of all, I'll just give you a brief update on teaching and learning, and that seems to be an area where principals are communicating as well, and you're probably hearing things from your, your children's teachers, but I'll talk to you a little bit about that. Attendance, grading, and then seniors. Class of 2020, so what can we expect for our seniors? Where are we with graduation? Let's talk a little bit about what you can expect and some of the things that we're thinking about as an administrative team and a staff to support our students graduating as the class of 2020. Then I'll also talk to you a little bit about athletic field improvements and our budget situation. And, and I'll conclude on that note based upon the fact that COVID-19, this pandemic we're experiencing, has changed our educational world dramatically. It has also impacted 
our budget projections and where we are as a school district in attaining a balanced budget to propose to our board for approval, which must be done by June 30. So I'll talk a little bit more about that and what that means. Okay, so since schools have been closed and we started to implement new learning, we refer to that as continuity of education, new learning. So we're really trying to offer our students meaningful experiences that move them forward. And that's very difficult in this environment, but our teachers are working diligently to try and make what's, what's afforded our students in terms of learning activities and assignments as meaningful, purposeful uh, as possible so that they move through this period from March 13th until the end of the school year, having gained um, some act some academic ground, if you will, and actually realize some new learning. And lots of different ways that's happening in different classrooms. You'll probably experience through your child audio and video recordings that help your children to understand from a teacher's voice or from a teacher's modeling, direct instruction, how to actually realize that new learning Lots of our teachers are also engaging our students in video conferencing. Our teachers all also offer office hours. So in the event your child has a question or would benefit from some reteaching or conversation with a teacher, our teachers have a schedule of office hours. So please feel free to reach out to them during that time if that would be helpful. But we're not only working on how we support our students most effectively academically in this virtual environment, but also how we tap into their social and emotional development. Because again, we recognize right now, those social interactions are extremely limited and very different from what we're used to. And that's something that we're cognizant of and really trying to support with more teacher interactions with our students, more teacher voice that's offered to them through their experience. At this point in the year, we often talk about summer programming and we tend to offer a couple of different types of summer programming for our students. We offer extended school year, which is specific to our special education students that qualify. We've been offering a program called LIFT for the past few years. And LIFT stands for Learning is Fun Together. And that really targets our elementary students who may be struggling in reading, writing, and or math, and they have an opportunity to come to school for a few hours a day during the summer and participate in our LIFT program. And it really helps us to review, reteach, reinforce, and help um, narrow the gaps maybe some of our students realize or promote some of the progress we hope they would otherwise realize during the regular school year. We also have a secondary summer school that's typically offered online and for the past several years has been offered online. Well, that's not very different from what we're used to now. The challenge for us is whether or not we know for certain we can bring students on site this summer to offer these programs on site. And there have been some conversations at the state level where there is strong discouraging of school districts and other organizations bringing large groups of people together. So right now, plan A, and what's most ideal in our view for our students would be to bring them on site, to bring them on campus, to offer our ESY program, to offer our LIFT program. We're not sure we can do that, so plan B would be to offer them some experiences virtually. So we'll continue with the sort of experiences we're offering now, continue to strengthen them, but afford our students some of those opportunities as they would otherwise experience during the summer. So stay tuned for more details about those different summer programs. We're working to fine tune those and we'll share those details as we continue to progress towards the summer, the end of the school year and summer. With respect to attendance and grading, just wanna review very briefly, attendance looks really different for our students and for our schools these days. During this pandemic and the school closures, we're not obligated to record attendance in the ways that we otherwise would be. 
we're really most interested in our students connecting with us, connecting with their teachers in their Google Classrooms, connecting with the learning assignments or the learning activities, reaching out during office hours if they have questions or need some support. So that's really how we're recording attendance. And when students aren't connecting with us, we're working to in turn figure out why and how we can support them doing that. So if you, your child happens to be struggling in this way, please let us know. Otherwise, our counselors, our principals are contacting families to help figure out how we make sure all of our students are connected to the learning opportunities at this point in the year. With grading, just very briefly, you, if you have a secondary level student, you received a report card for your secondary level student and <clears throat> the report card represented their progress in, in the form of grades again. And the, the one point I wanna make about the report card and the grades is that fourth marking period will only contribute 10%, while first, second, and third marking periods will each contribute 30%. So a slight adjustment there, we're still uh, monitoring our students and reporting their progress out in the form of grades at the secondary level. However, that fourth marking period will contribute significantly less to the overall final average and no final exams for our students at the high school. At the elementary level, we're still in conversations and figuring out how we'll share progress, report progress to you at the end of the year. We've talked about a couple of different ideas. One would be a very brief narrative, helping you to realize how your student has done this last trimester in the areas of reading and writing, as well as mathematics. So those, those continue to be our focus areas for our students at the elementary level, building that foundation. More to come on how we'll report out their progress. Okay, let's talk about seniors. Let's talk about the class of 2020. I am aware there are lots of questions about how the end of the senior year looks for our students in the class of 2020. And it goes without saying that it certainly looks a lot different from the way we conclude and celebrate seniors other years. And that's unsettling, however, we're gonna try and make it as special as, as possible. So admin and staff are working to really try and figure out what we can do in this virtual environment, how we pre pre prepare and present, excuse me, a virtual graduation ceremony so that our students graduating get the recognition they deserve and that we want them to have. We wanna showcase the talents of the class of 2020. So right now, we have a virtual graduation ceremony prepared or planned, excuse me, it's not quite prepared yet, for June 5th. And a little bit more about that. That, that virtual graduation will include really a formal representation of our students graduating this year in their caps and gowns. So they'll be depicted in their caps and gowns and this will be in the form of a video that will be played on June 5th that will also not only consist of the individual pictures of each of our graduates, but it will also consist of Leanna Strohecker and Evan Reiser speaking as they normally would in the stadium, on the stage, because of their roles as president of the National Honor Society and president of the class of 2020, respectively. So they'll speak, there'll be student speeches. Mrs. Lofton, our board president, will also speak. She'll share her speech, I'll share my speech, and Dr. Moss will also offer her speech. However, the good news is they'll all be a bit shorter than they typically are, so that's probably a good thing. Um, but, it, but at any rate, we'll all offer our words to the, to the students graduating and wish them well in our ways, students and some of these adults. So there'll be some strong similarities in that regard to the virtual graduation ceremony. And that will certainly be something that will be shown on June 5th, 6.30 or so at night. Uh, we hope to also incorporate some of our music ensembles that are typically a part of the graduation ceremony 
And I know that Dr. Moss is also looking at ways to enhance that ceremony, that video, with maybe some candid photos of some of our students. So we'll see where that goes. But we again, really trying to make it as special as possible, showcase our students to the best of our ability in this particular setting. Now we've also talked about the possibility of a tentative graduation ceremony, an in-person graduation ceremony in August. And we certainly have that date reserved with a rehearsal date and even a senior picnic date. Dr. Moss has also talked about the possibility of a prom in August. There's been some recent information that's come out of the state, the governor's office and Dr. Rachel Levine discouraging and really predicting that it's gonna be very difficult to bring large groups together in August. So while we have those dates reserved, we're not 100% certain, they're tentative, that we'll be able to bring our students and community together and maintain the health and safety of everybody that might be a part of that. So that's a wait and see. So for now, we're gonna put our all into these virtual celebrations, the virtual graduation. And if I back up, Prior to graduation, there will be some other really unique and creative ideas that will be shared with our community that highlight our seniors, that showcase our seniors, and help us as a community to really get to know our students and all that they've really gone through. So they've, they've sacrificed an awful lot this year, and their senior year conclusion, conclusion or ending to their senior year really looks different from seniors of the past, and I'm hoping seniors of the future, but we'll do everything we can to make it special. So the other, the other thing I wanted to talk about, um, I've sort of mentioned it, are some of those celebrations prior to graduation that typically occur. So we typically have a senior award ceremony in our competition gym, and we have lots of administration and staff that's typically involved there to hand out the awards that our students have earned. We'll be doing that virtually this year. And there will be some other really nice celebrations that will highlight our students that focus in the area of the arts, as well as those that focus in the area of athletics, as well as some candids and some other things that we're trying to be real creative around. So look for recognitions that will be made to our seniors so that we recognize some of the sacrifices and the differences for them graduating this year and from other graduating classes and acknowledge all that they've accomplished. We're, we're sort of excited about some of the ideas that people are sharing. We were tentatively planning for the last day of school for our seniors to be certainly prior to June 8th, which is the last day of school for underclassmen, we're zeroing in on a date in May based upon AP testing. So stay tuned, but it will be sooner than when the underclassmen finish the school year. And that's been a question that's been posed to me. So look for that confirmation date in May when our, se when our seniors will be finished. We're gonna schedule for them opportunities to come into the high school with the appropriate PPE, personal protective equipment. They have to wear a mask in the event these guidelines are still in place. They'll have to maintain social distancing, but they can pick up their cap and gown and drop off their Chromebook and their textbook. So we'll work out some of those details later in May for our seniors and more information to come on that from Dr. Moss at the high school. One of the other things we've been thinking about, so in addition to how we'll celebrate graduation, in addition to how we'll recognize our graduating seniors, we're also thinking about the legacy we might offer them as they are so different a group because of what they've experienced and how their high school career has concluded. We're thinking about how do we leave a legacy for them? And we've had some really interesting ideas that have been offered, but again, our admin team, some of our key community members that work closely with the school are thinking about a really nice way to do that. So stay tuned for those ideas as well and more information on that. And if you have questions about things that are happening for our seniors, please, please don't hesitate to reach out to the high school administration or to me. 
And, and again, we continue to fine tune and get specific with dates. We're developing a schedule for when some of those special recognitions will play out for our students. Um, but don't hesitate to ask questions. We want you to feel informed about what's happening for our seniors. I know there have been a lot of questions about that. So if it's okay, I'll move on to some kind of business items, if you will, access to buildings and food provisions. We, we still are thinking about how we get our students into the building to retrieve their personal items. Again, I don't feel comfortable with us doing that right now with, with the stay-at-home order still in place. However, I do predict that maybe later in May that will be a possibility and we'll certainly uphold the guidelines that are in place by the Departments of Health to support our students doing that. So don't think that we've forgotten about that or that we've set it aside. We, we are absolutely trying to figure out the safest and best time to bring our students into the building to retrieve some of those items that they need and that they want before moving on to the next grade next year. So we'll keep you posted on that. Good news around food provisions. As you know, we offer free meals on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So we offer free meals to families, anybody who needs them, no questions asked. You can come to the bus circle at the high school or at Schwenksville Elementary between the hours of nine and 11 on Monday, Wednesday, or Friday, and pick up meals for two days at a time. <clears throat> so if you, if you head over to the high school Friday morning and you need three meals or four meals, whatever it is, they'll be handed off to you, no questions asked. And you can do that at the high school or Schwanksville. And it doesn't matter if you don't attend the high school or your children don't attend Schwanksville. We are supporting students anywhere in our district at both of these sites. The good news is, just to add to this, is that we'll be soon offering meals on weekends too. So <clears throat> our food service staff has been out there consistently on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays and working in conjunction with our Power Packs volunteer group to provide food to families. They're now gonna do that on weekends too. We'll have more details on our website, but that's great news and very appreciative of their efforts to support those of you that benefit from this during this time. So that's really a lot about what's happening for our students and for our families in the schools, connected to the schools. I'd like to shift to talk just a little bit about how COVID-19 and this pandemic has impacted our budget. Each year at this time of year, our board of school directors is obligated to approve a proposed or preliminary final budget. And they have to do that by May 30. That's the law, no choice. They have to also approve a final budget by June 30th. And there have been no exceptions to this law because of the pandemic. You may be aware there have been a lot of changes to legislation, but there haven't been changes made to what's expected of our board. So even though the state may not have their budget worked out because there are a lot of uncertainties right now with how our economy is doing and what the projections are for the future based upon the challenges to our economy right now, regardless, our board has to approve that final budget by June 30th. And Based on an analysis of our spending habits, how the district has spent or expended its revenues, and the past recession that really occurred in 2008 and extended for several years, there have been analysis and projections about the revenues that we would expect as a school district for the 2021 school year. So the school district budget is based on revenues and expenditures. That's really the terminology and the references that we most commonly make. How many revenues or how much revenue is coming into the district? What are the expenditures we would propose to make to run the district, to operate it and offer the experiences we do to our students? There are three major categories of revenues that the district realizes, and they are local, state, and federal. Three major categories. Local expenditures are by far the majority of the revenues that we realize 
I said local expenditures, I meant local revenues, sorry about that. So most of our budget is based on the local revenues the district realizes, and they're projected to decrease a little bit going into next year. State revenues make up about 19% of the budget. Um, they're also predicted to decrease, but not as significantly. And the federal revenues, less than 1% of our total budget, really aren't predicted or projected to change. At any rate, that projected decrease in revenues with the expenditures we're currently proposing has left us with a shortfall. So as we plan for a final budget that would be balanced and something our board could approve, right now we have a shortfall. So we need to figure out how do we reduce expenditures? How do we cut costs? How do we eliminate some expenditures so that our board is presented with a budget that's balanced and one that they can approve. So that's really an exercise we're in right now. And, and currently, there's a fairly significant shortfall, up to $5.8 million of a shortfall, that is currently one we're looking at as a school district. And we have to figure out how we might offset by either reducing expenditures or enhancing the revenues. So that's the exercise that we're working through right now. We have some ideas, however, it's not easy. It's a very challenging situation. I'm confident we'll get through it, but for right now, it's a challenging situation because $5.8 million is a significant shortfall for us to navigate and work through. But I wanted you to know that as I shift to talk a little bit about some of the capital projects and in particular the athletic field improvements. So that budget shortfall is really the focus right now for me as the superintendent working closely with our administrative team and our board. How do we figure out how we get to a balanced budget? That's a major question. And alongside that, we're moving along and getting closer to the time where we had anticipated, hopefully, completing some really significant and important capital projects. The turf fields are two that really stand out. And they were projects that many of us were really excited about, really worked hard to get to, very appreciative of our board who unanimously at the last vote supported the idea of improving our athletic fields in this way. However, then COVID-19 hit, the pandemic hit. So not only do we still not yet have permits, we also have a budget that we're focused on and we have to figure out how we balance before we can invest lots of money in these other projects. So, so I've mentioned before during a different board meeting where we talked about the budget that for now, capital projects and the turf projects included are on hold. And, and it doesn't mean that they're not going to come to fruition at some point, but for right now, the focus is on the budget. And really, we can't move them forward till we get the permits. And we're close to getting those. There's been some back and forth between the Conservation District, the Montgomery County Conservation District, who has to award final approval to the plans to award the permits along with Perkiomen Township. There's been some back and forth based on the engineering of what happens underneath that turf really how we manage the water, the runoff. So we're working to finish those up and get the specs to where they need to be so that permits are awarded. However, for right now, we still don't have the permits. We don't have a balanced budget. So we have put these projects on hold for now. Stay tuned, they'll be discussed. And, and again, I don't want this to go away forever. However, my focus right now is on the budget overall. And then we'll get to some of these major projects because we all recognize the benefit to our students and to our community in these improvements, in these athletic field improvements. There was a lot of excitement and dedication and passion around moving in this direction. And I'm very appreciative of all of that. We're just going to hit pause for a little bit on that. Okay. So I have my assistant here. That's really what I wanted to touch upon, the different topics that I was hoping to communicate to you tonight. I have an assistant who's helping me field some of the questions. So I'll take a look at those and try and address some of the things that have come to you. 
Okay, this is this is an interesting question, and it's not the first time I've heard that. So, is there any talk about teachers following their students to the next grade level for next year, particularly at the elementary level? I think that's a wonderful idea. We've actually talked about some different ideas. We haven't landed anywhere, but we've talked about some different ideas where we might start students out with the teachers they left in March to, to bring closure to that school year before moving them on to their new, their new teacher or the next year's teacher, if you will. So we're thinking about things like this. Again, if I go back to that social emotional focus, this is an activity that would really support our students in that way. So I appreciate you offering that. And we are looking at something like that to support our students so that they can bring closure to their current grade level with their teacher and with their classmates that they've come to know really well before they move on to the next group. Okay, why can't we have a video of students walking across the stage for the virtual ceremony like Springford is doing? I'll be very honest, I'm very reluctant to bring students out right now, so this has been the hesitation. Right now there's a stay at home order and I'm not sure of the dates. I have heard, I am familiar that Springford is planning to do, to do this to bring some number of students in at a time with family members to walk across the stage, receive a diploma, all to be recorded on, on video and then put together for a virtual ceremony. I am aware of that. Um, and, and I believe Springford is one of the few schools in Montgomery County doing this at this point based on the scientific data, the information we have, the guidelines that we're upholding right now, that doesn't seem safe to me for our students, which is why the hesitation on my part to support something like that at this point in time, that could change. But right now, that's really the reason. I want our students to stay safe, to remain healthy, and bringing people together in that setting raises lots of question and wonder about whether or not we can actually provide the oversight and the management that would be necessary to make sure people didn't come closer than six feet, that they were all wearing masks, because right now that's what the rules say. So I, I know that graduation, it's become very clear to me that the graduation ceremony being so different from what we're used to is really hard and we're trying to do whatever we can to make the best of it. However, I don't wanna put our students and our families at risk by bringing them together. If there's a dramatic change in the guidelines and the way that looks, I'm happy to talk more about that. But for now, that's the reason Perkiomen Valley is not planning for that approach. Okay, if we have a real graduation or prom in August, how will students who leave for college in August be accommodated? So that's a really good question. And I have learned from people that the dates that we put out there as our tentative dates, which again, based on some recent communication from the state may not actually come to fruition, but people have said to me, my child will already be, be in college. You know, they'll be moved in if you will, or there's some other aspect to the planning that isn't gonna work. Um, and I don't have a good solution for that right now. We were trying to go out as late as we could to, to try and increase the likelihood that it could happen. It may be that we could back it up. However, um, we'll have to take that question to the admin team, the high school admin team, and talk more about that because I don't have a good answer. It's a really important question because I know that some students who participate in sports and athletics are expected to be in college earlier in August than, than maybe others would be. So it's definitely something that's been brought to my attention. So we'll work on that. And I'll try and follow up with you on that. Is there a plan in place for returning in the fall? Another really important question. And along the lines of summer programming, summer school, we're thinking of a plan A and a plan B. Right now, we would love to be able to have our students back on site in summer to offer them some of those summer programs I talked about a few minutes ago to celebrate an in-person graduation ceremony. However, I'm not sure that's gonna happen. Again, right now, the state is saying, we don't think you're gonna be able to have any large group gatherings or to have students in your buildings. They don't think that the world will be ready or Montgomery County will be ready for that by then. 
So it's really possible that we could start the school year in a virtual environment again. So we're starting to think about how that might look in the fall versus how it looks now. And I am planning to administer a survey to parents to learn from our parent community how the experience has served their children, how this experience from March 13th to where we are to where we'll end up in June has served your children. And I think you'll help us to know areas where we can build upon and make stronger, as well as areas where we can improve upon because they haven't served your kids so well. That's really important to us. I'm also thinking about how I start to engage with students. And I am planning to set up some conversations for middle school and high school students so that I can learn from them firsthand how their experiences have been. So look for some notifications. I'm gonna recruit and invite students to join me in either a Zoom or maybe a Google Classroom where we can talk about, again, some of the, the successes and the challenges of learning in this virtual environment. I'm excited about that. Um, I'm also planning to reach out to elementary students with read alouds and maybe some engagement that way um, in the hopes that I can connect with them and, and learn a little bit from them in the process because their voice is really important too. So parents look for a survey in the next week or so and students look for some opportunities for conversation if you're interested. I'd love to hear from you. So our plan for returning in the fall consists of that plan A and that plan B, some uncertainties, which is really probably the underlying quality and, and, and aspect of this whole situation. It's so unprecedented what we're dealing with. And I keep using the, the phrasing that we're sort of building the plane as we're flying it. Things change so rapidly and we're trying to keep up and make sure we offer your students, your children, the strongest service that we can, the best service that we can. So stay tuned, we'll continue to provide you information as it becomes available. End of year celebrations for other grades like fifth and eighth, I've mentioned that before. I know that that's, that's really important to our fifth graders who are preparing to transition to middle school and to our eighth graders who are preparing to transition to the high school. I think we need a little bit more time to know whether or not we can bring them together in the summer, but there has been conversation about doing that similar to those August, those tentative dates in August for our seniors. There have been some tentative dates, ideas around how do we have an, a fifth grade celebration because our kids really, they look forward to that and they really appreciate it. And how do we set our eighth graders up to bring closure to their middle school experience and get excited about high school? So if people are having issues with a Chromebook, can they make arrangements to get a new one? That's a great question too, very practical question. If you're having any issues with a Chromebook or tech in general, please submit a help desk ticket and it goes to helpdesk at pvsd.org. So that's our help desk system and we'll try and accommodate you. We've had a couple of grab and goes where you may have participated, we've handed out Chromebooks to families that needed a device. Maybe they didn't have one at the elementary level. We also have provided some repairs to people through a grab and go help desk. Okay, so my, my helper just showed me a, a really important question. So I'll come back to that. Thank you. Yeah, that's good. Um, I'm sort of bouncing around. She's helping me to stay organized. <laughs> okay, so, um, so Again, if you have an issue with any of the technology, feel free to reach out helpdesk at pvsd.org and somebody will respond to you and we'll make arrangements to support you and make sure you have what you need. Okay. Okay, so there have been some questions about even more details on the virtual graduation and, and I recognize that this isn't the ideal. It's not what everybody wants right now but we feel as a school district, it's what we can offer our students with the circumstances that we're now facing. And we'll talk more about that. And actually, what I would like to do is invite some senior parents to have some conversation with me as well. I didn't mention that before when I talked about the parent survey and I talked about 
offering students opportunities to share their voice and their thoughts about the experience. I'm also interested in meeting with some parents of seniors to exchange ideas. Again, how do we maximize the recognition and the showcasing of our students graduating as the class of 2020? So I'm happy to do that. So look for opportunities for us to connect and I'll invite Dr. Moss and the high school admin to participate in that as well. But I'm, I'm very interested in your thoughts and ideas. There's been some wonderfully creative ideas shared to date. So I'd love to hear from more of you. Okay, how are we going to assist families who are beginning to go back to work and don't help their children learn at home or maybe struggle to help their children learn at home? I think this has been one of the most unsettling aspects of this virtual schooling that, that I have engaged in with some parents that, you know, it's not really homeschooling, it's crisis schooling. Maybe you've heard that phrasing. None of us signed up for this. If you want a cyber experience for your child, there are options um, for you to have that or arrange for that for your child. We've all been sort of thrust into this situation. Education as we know it has sort of been turned upside down. It's been challenging for our students. It's been challenging for our staff. I know it's challenging for lots of our family that now not only are working at home in a very different environment from what they're used to, caring for family members and teaching their children or supporting them in school. And, and I'm not sure how to fix that otherwise, other than to continue to encourage you to reach out to us. You know, what can we do to support your efforts? How do we partner in a, in a stronger way so that it's not feeling so overwhelming or stressful? And remember I said, I don't want school to be the thing that stresses you out even more if your world right now is stressful. That's not what we want. We want to support the efforts. So until those daycares or childcare centers are up and running again, it's a really challenging situation. So how do we work together? And, and what can we offer you so that it's optimum? It's as optimum as we can make it. That, that's really what I would pose. So let us know. Reach out to your teachers, reach out to your building principals. They're working really hard to make this the best it can be for our kids and we'll do what we can to extend that and make sure we do even more if it would be helpful. Okay, so I got through one page. Okay, so I see one more. Oh, kindergarten registration, great, thank you. So kindergarten registration right now is being planned to take place virtually, believe it or not. And some of our schools are starting to pilot that. So what you may soon hear about from your child's incoming kindergarten students elementary school is an opportunity to engage again via Zoom or Google Hangout. It's a virtual conversation. And we'll take whatever paperwork that we can get from you that's expected when your child registers via PDF, um, scanned documents. If we have to wait until the start of the school year, then we'll do that. But we'll at least get to know your child and move them through that screening process so that we can work to place your child with a teacher and set him or her up for the fall. So kindergarten registration in the three schools that it hasn't yet occurred will take place virtually. So look for more information about that. And I think we also have some information on our, on our website. But I know we were working through some of the logistics even last week about that. Because again, it's a very different way of engaging our youngest learners and introducing them to our, to our schools. So um, stay tuned, but we're moving that forward. And we'd like to actually conclude kindergarten registration before the end of the school year, before we get into summer. We'd really like to know who our students, who our new students will be and how we can support them, acclimate them to school, as well as place them with a teacher. So, so with that, I think we've covered everything. Uh, don't hesitate ever to reach out. Let me know of additional questions or comments. Please stay tuned. We have a work session Monday night with our board, so lots more conversation about some of the things connected to our school as we prepare to wind down the year and hopefully look forward to healthier times for all of us 
um, stronger times for all of us. Thanks for all that you're doing and your partnership with us in the efforts to support your children. Take care.